Okay, as we continue with uh, learning how to finish our logo, we have to think about how it's going to be used in the real world. And it's going to be used in our midterm critique. We are going to print this. In order to be ready for that, we need to understand how these objects work as physical objects in the world. So I'm going to open up the PSD, you know, of this logo, the one that I can save a PNG from. Remember, this has offsets on it so that it looks good on multiple backgrounds. And it is a vector smart object, EPS, that's brought in to look good and placed on an 8x10 canvas in Photoshop at 350 pixels per inch. 50 pixels per inch higher than standard print resolution. That's just our lab standard. Why? Because every once in a while a student, I just disagree with how they think it looks good. And while we're printing it, I'll say, how about we try it a little bit bigger? <laughs> And so that's, it's good to have a little wiggle room in your resolution. What if um, I don't like my black logo just as it is? I know if it just had a little bit of color, a little bit extra, I would like it more. So this is what I would do to do a color version of your logo. And you're all required to try a color version. It doesn't need to be the one you print. But... Take your smart object layer with your offsets. So I have my different whites, my outer glow, my stroke on there. Uh, notice that on my black, and I want you to do this for your black logos, I don't have anything that's actually touching the, the vector inside of it. I don't have any textures or gradients on my black logo, right? Now I'm going to duplicate it, Command J, and that will bring all the layer styles and the smart object along with it. I'm going to turn off the black one. And now I'm going to double click on effects. And the first one I'll do is color overlay. Co color overlay will replace the pixels that make your vector image with any color you want. So if I make it bright red, that's a color logo, right? The most basic way. If I want, under color overlay, this is just how you can replace the color completely. I can also take that opacity down and let whatever the, the native pixel color was to my vector uh, fill in. So now it's layered with, with red at 20, 23% opacity. So that's one way. Once you do a setting and you check it, you can always go back to it. It will remember it. So I'm going to uncheck that right now and show you the next one, which is gradient overlay. And if you're not seeing all of these different layer styles, I need to reset your defaults, right? And I can help you do that. Just save your work. So if I click on gradient overlay, this is a wonderful tool. And this is one I think all of you will like playing with. So it doesn't look like much here. It just depends what the last gradient used was. But if I click on that gradient bar, I can actually use the presets in this. This is uh, Photoshop 2022. Let's see what would go well if I have like a flaming eye or it, our campus colors are green and blue. So maybe I'll go to the greens and I can just pick a gradient. And you can see they're all different. This one looks pretty nice. Um, stay clicked on it and you'll see the gradient here. This is fully customizable. So this just gives you a way to start. You see the stops at the bottom. So this gradient goes between this color to this color, stopping at this color. I can change that middle color by clicking on it, by clicking on the color, by choosing something else. And now you see that the gradient goes between that color to this color to that color. It's very 80s. I can change the angle of it. Right now it's at 90 degrees. So if I say OK, I can change it to be a 45 degree. I can even change it to be a different spread of those gradients. And then how can I further customize this gradient? I can add colors just by clicking on this. I can add a red. Not only that, but I can shift that around.
and I can split the difference. I can say, give me the perfect mix of this magenta and that red, or this will be a little bit easier to see, this uh, light cyan and that red. And we can pull it out from there. You know, it will always show you what the midpoint is. And then I can spread them differently. So if I want that red to last longer, I can do that. Throw some pink in there. So you have lots of control with the color and the what's called the location of the color. And the angle. I'm going to set mine kind of at the tilt of this dynamic Hawkeye. Ooh, Hawkeye. Ooh. New Marvel logo. Okay. Play with the scale on gradient, see how you know strong you want it. If I don't want so much purple, I just go back to here and I might say, stretch that all the way out, really limit the purple. If you want to delete a gradient, stop. You just click it and hit delete and it will trash it, right? So you have so much control. You want to add one back in, you just click on the gradient and then choose the color. All right, now, now that I've done that, I can still turn on color overlay. And you see how color overlay is on top of the gradient? So what if for color overlay, I want that to be 100% green? Again, our campus colors, green and blue. And it's a really kind of toxic light green as well. Not my favorite color. Okay, but if I fade that in opacity, I can let the gradient come through. Ooh. So it can be a mix in your color solutions of gradients and color overlays. And then, do you remember uh, blending styles? Like we did multiply, we did overlay. You can use those for these effects as well. So instead of normal mode, I can put it on Dissolve, which is one of my favorites. And this was in a lot of the kind of retro album art that's done digitally. <coughs> and if you do Dissolve, you'll get that kind of, it's called a sand pattern diffusion. It will break it up into individual pixels. I like that. I can try, oh, that's pretty nice. I can try um, soft light. I can try pin light. Just get these subtleties. The pin light's really nice. I can try satin, which gives you kind of a shape based on the shape of your vector, kind of a core shadow and a highlight. You can play with that. And instead of using black, I could use like a dark blue for that. And now it looks kind of ripply and satiny, except that the outer glow and the stroke aren't helping that anymore. Right. So, but I can put an inner glow on there. And basically, you can just play with these, these layer styles, the blending modes of the layer styles. You can play with their noisiness. That's another way of doing that kind of dissolve feature. You can play with their dimensions, their spread, how jittery they are. Basically, just want to make something cool. And it doesn't have to be, I mean, as a color logo, it should still work on white. It should still work on black. It should still work on gray. But for printing it, you might not worry about the offsets, right? But if I put those offsets in, you're not going to see them when you print it on white. The last one, I really like these. So I'm going to make a duplicate. I like that. The last effect I wanted to show you is texture. Because this actually uses kind of an overall texturing, which is often used in color logos. And you'll see it at the top. It's called bevel and emboss. In order for it to feel like a texture, you see what it just did? It has to pick a light source. And so this is kind of like mapping 3D modeling onto your flat shapes, your vector shapes. So if you click on bevel and emboss, you can play with a texture stamp 
that gets pressed into it. And you can do the drop down menu. And I would use water because water is basically a nice, the ones that are built in, you can always import these textures, but you can play with the scale of it and make it like a paper texture. And you can play with, excuse me, the depth of it. So it's more subtle. That's pretty nice. And then contour is this highlight and this core shadow you see wrapping around your shape itself. So if I play with contour, basically I'm just playing with how strong is it? Do I want it chiseled out like it's carved out of beveled stone? Or do I want it softer like it's rounded out? I kind of like the beveled. I haven't really done that before. But if you have clean vectors, look how nicely that works with these layer styles, right? You can do inner shadows as well as inner highlights. There's just so much you can do. And then lastly, there's drop shadows. So drop shadows are good if you're going to print it on white. I'm going to turn off the stroke here so you can see that drop shadow. You can decide if you want one and how opaque it should be, how noisy it should be, how much it should be pulled away, and the direction in which it's lit. There's something called global light, which means whatever angle I choose for one lighting effect, if I have global light checked, it will match for all the lighting effects. So these are our different options to do our color solution. Now, what if I wanted uh, like just, this is all connected as one piece, but I wanted just the, uh, the eye here to be deep red and nothing else. This is how I would do that as a color mock-up within Photoshop. I would lasso, I'd probably grab a little bit more than I want. I do internal compositing. So I'm going to select it from the vector and then duplicate it. But when you do that, it will carry all the effects with it but it will no longer be a smart object. So now this is rasterized to whatever resolution. But that allows me to then cut it out. I'm just gonna do a rough job here. Delete that, trim it here. And then I just play with the layer styles individually on this. So, Let's try color overlay. I can adjust it instead of green. Let's do red. Let's do a kind of fiery red. Let's take that up to, there we go. And then let's turn the stroke off. That's what's giving me that white. And then let's turn off the outer glow. And then let's turn on, remember you can always add effects an inner shadow on that. Let's extend that inner shadow, give a little bit more opacity, a little bit more size. And then let me just clean it up a little bit better. Now you might ask, there we go, why is the eyelid not showing the shadow on top of it, right? And that's because this was pasted on top. And the only problem with layer styles and, is that they can only map to the pixels you have in there. So unless I wanted to change my vector and get rid of the eye there, it's always going to look that way there. But I can take what I composite it on top and shift it so that it works. All right, so let's say that's the, the logo version I want to, to print. You're going to see all that kind of detail in the print for sure. And of course, I can use dodging and burning. Once you rasterize, you get all those tools back.